Today, we're going to review some things about verbs, and we're going to be ta specifically talking about the moods of verbs. So far in Latin, we have talked about three different types. We have talked about the infinitive mood, which is the RE form of the word. Did I spell that correctly? Yes, infinitive. They all end with an RE, well, most of them anyway, and they will translate to, to, to something. And it's your second principal part of a verb. And so when I mean your principal parts, I'm talking about when we talk about amo, amare, amawi, amatu. Your second principal part is your infinitive, since this, so this would be to love. We've also talked about the imperative, such as this. The imperative is a command, and you get it by going to your second, your second principal part, amare, and taking off the re, and you have ama, love. Or if you have amate, you're telling multiple people to love. Also, your negative imperative, you would have noli for the singular, noli plus the infinitive, noli amare, don't love. Nolite, amare, don't love, but to many people. If you need a review, I'll post a video in your grammar notes about the imperative mood. And the third one we've talked about is the indicative mood. And the indicative mood is very interesting because we've told you if it wasn't imperative or infinitive, it's indicative. Because until now, that is the case. Indicative mood is used for like factual statements. And it's a little bit interesting when I say factual statements because I'm talking about the sky is blue. That would be an indicative verb. Um, the student is sitting, all indicative. But it could also be a lie, the sky is purple. It is being stated as a factual statement. And really to truly understand what the indicative verb is or the indicative mood is, you have to know what the fourth one is. And that is what we're gonna be talking about today. Today, we want to be talking a little bit about the subjunctive. Now, we don't have to worry too much about this today, other than the fact to recognize that it is subjunctive. Subjunctives are used in hypothetical situations or weird clauses. Now, when we get into seeing them in hypothetical situations, you will be able to understand truly the difference between a subjunctive and the indicative. But today we're just going to be using them in weird clauses. And this first one is called a cum clause. And what do I mean by a cum clause or a weird clause? And what do I mean by the subjunctive? Well, today we'll be specifically talking about the pluperfect subjunctive. And honestly, I like this one because I find them super easy to recognize. So imagine I have the principal part, amo, Amare, Amawi, Amatu. You're going to take your third principal part because this is the perfect one. And then I'm going to take off A, A, I'm going to take off the I, so A, M, A, V. Then I'm going to add my new ending, E, save. And then I'm going to add whatever ending I want to say, Moose just like a normal indicative. So this part lets me know that my verb means love. This part lets me know that this is pluperfect subjunctive because we've never seen this before. And this lets me know that the, our subject is we. So if you were to translate this in a cum clause with a cum, literally such as this, you would translate the cum as when we had loved. You notice that it's translated exactly like the indicative. And that's because in this case, we do. So you just have to be able to recognize that this is another form of the imperfect, not the, this is another form of the pluperfect, but this one's just in the mood subjunctive, but it's not gonna be translated any differently. So let's work on a new verb. Let's use the word moneo, monere, monui, monitus. It is formed from your third principal part. So I'm going to put M-O-N-U. Then I'm going to add my I-S-S-E. And then I'm going to add M. 
because I'm going to just make this a random subject. And then cum lets you know it's a cum clause. So we have cum when the M tells me I had advised. So if you're sitting here thinking, so a cum clause is just a clause that starts with a cum and has a subjunctive verb. That's literally all it is. This cum clause just prefers to take a subjunctive verb. So let's actually look at a full on sentence to figure out how difficult these things actually are. Here's my sentence. Cum modestis ad pantum ad venisit equus constitit. Well, I can see right here quite clearly, this is my pluperfect subjunctive. I can tell from this essay right here, and it's starting with a cum. So this is a cum clause. And so when I start with a cum clause, I'm going to start with when. And I know this is something someone had arrived. So my subject or my nominative is modestus. So when modestus had arrived, because that's what ad is, Ad pontum, to the bridge. This is my prepositional phrase. When Modestus had arrived to the bridge, equus constitit, the horse stopped. You'll see that even though this is in a subjunctive mood, it's, you're not translating it any differently than you normally would. There will be a point where you will, but we don't have to worry about that until I think Latin 4, so you're safe about that. Uh, let's do one more sentence. I really like cum clauses, especially in the pluperfect subjunctive, because I, they're so easy. They just sort of stand out with this ise in it. So this is had exited, when the king had exited, Salius called the soldiers to himself. So let's review what we learned today. What did we learn today? Moods. There's four of them, the indicative, the imperative, the infinitive, and the subjunctive. And currently, when we're talking about the subjunctive, we are only using them in something called a cum clause. Literally just means, so let's talk about two. You'll see them in a cum clause. A cum clause is made up of the word cum, which you would translate as when, followed by a subjunctive which you're just going to translate in whatever tense it's in. Currently, we're just talking about the pluperfect subjunctive, so we're just going to say right now it's cool when with a had ed form. And then you just translate the sentence as normal. 